All right, the name that Pat likes to pronounce the best. Jean. Jean Segura. Jean Segura. He runs. He hits. He catches. He's like Superman. And he plays the thinnest position of all. Yeah, sure, let's start. He's the best. Um, Hope you have 353, seven home runs. Where the hell did that come from? 18 RBIs uh, and 14 stolen bases. Is that right? That's right. The steals are absolutely legitimate. He's, he's a speedster. And he's going to try to steal every time he's on base. So I, out of all of those numbers. In both directions. In both directions, yes. Although he didn't get credit for stealing first. The 14 steals, he's on pace for around 60. It's tough to project someone to get 60 steals, but look. If there's any number that is completely sustainable out of all of his stats, it's the steal numbers. Because the home runs... He really does run. He run anyway. He, he does, just yeah. In. He's not going to hit 30 home runs, I hate to tell you. It's just, it's not going to happen. I think the most he hit in the minors ever was 10. Yeah, and that was in a full season of, like, double so A ball. seven. Yeah. So, uh, now, he came over in the Grinky trade, correct? Uh, yes, he was in Angels Prospect. Well, they, they knew what they were doing there. Yeah, they did. But right now, like, you see his average is 350. His batting average of balls in play is 380 which is almost 90 points higher than his career average. So that number is going to come back down. He may be able to hit around 300, which is still great. Uh, I know Scott Engel talked a little bit about this, that people are looking to sell high on him. And I agree with Scott. Don't do that. There's no reason to sell high on him. You got him for basically nothing. He plays a thin position where all the best players have got hurt with Hanley Ramirez and Jose Reyes, Tulowitzki's missed time, Jeter's out. He's a guy who's safe right now. He plays in a good lineup, and he's still going to score over 100 runs, steal 60 bases. There's supreme value in that. Do people not know about him? You look at the, the percentage ownership, and it was virtually nil to start out with, and every week well, that makes sense. up. Now everybody... Well, he was a sleeper coming into the year. People thought well, that, he, he, he was... He was afraid for Greg, you didn't they realize what the... Yeah, but they didn't think he'd be this good. Even if you go look at his minor league numbers, they don't correspond with what no, he's doing you know right what? now. I don't like ten, only 10 walks. It's not that there's 10 walks and 23 strikeouts, but for somebody who's apparently supposed to be getting on base, running with their legs, you would think he's not going to be... Well, I don't know if he's... He's Mike Trout. <laughs> yeah, but he's not Mike he's Trout. He's better than Mike Trout. Right now, yeah, he is better than Mike Trout. I, if you want to make that deal for me, I'll trade you Seguera for Trout right now if you want. Raul Abanez had a fantastic week this past week. Now, Raul is in a part-time role... I don't know, is he sharing time with Jason Bay? He's sharing time with everyone. Franklin Gutierrez, Michael Saunders, they're all, they have a whole slew of outfielders. You know, he, he six home runs now and 17 RBIs. He's only hitting 212, but I guess they're all home runs, all his hits. Yeah, and uh, he's a sufferer of batting average of balls in play. It's around 200. But he has four home runs this week. He does, and I, I mean, now his slugging is over 500 for the first time since 2009. Only three times in his career has he gone over 500 slugging. Uh, Left-handed power plays at Saveco, which is I, I think is something that people overlook. Uh, we always hear about how it's you know just a pitcher's haven and no one can hit home runs there. Does not apply to left-handed batters. Lefties can slug it out of Saveco, no problem. And we're seeing that with Abanez. Uh, I, I mean, I wouldn't want. Well, the pitcher has something to do with it, that. It, no? it does, but left-handed hitters just—it's a shorter porch. It's just—it's not into the wind. It's not facing the ocean, so it, it's just a much easier way to hit a home run out to right field than to left field. But. Look, he's Raul with Banyas. He's going to go through. Face the ocean. What does that make a difference? Well, the wind coming in off the ocean is going out the other way. Well, they have McCovey Cove. Well, that's not the ocean. Is McCovey Cove not the ocean? Isn't it on the bay? Well, it's a bay. It's not the ocean. There's a difference between the bay and the ocean. What? Tell me what the difference between a bay and an ocean is. The bay has a tide. It's flat. There's no, there's no waves in a bay. Are you saying the ocean doesn't have a tide? There are waves in an ocean. Yeah. It's very deep. Large. There's crustaceans. There's large fish things. Let me ask you this. The bay just has, it's flat and the tide comes in slow and goes out slow. People sit and it's relaxing. They sit in the boat and they fish. They they water ski. They jet ski. They, you know, they, they do relaxing things. Parasail, they don't do that in the middle of the Pacific. No, it's not the middle of the ocean. It, it's an in, in, enclave of the ocean. That's why it, they gave it its own it, name. It's, it's, salt, a bay. it's salt water. If it's salt water... Right, back to baseball. I got us off the track. I'm it's sorry. not It's not the Dead Sea here. Only, well, you know, I don't know how many people are buying into Raul Labanya. It's apparently not too many. His, his ownership went from 3% to 7%. So somebody, four people or a couple of people, linked him. Um, are you interested in Raul Labanya for your team? No, not really. Nothing outside of an AL only league. Just because I don't think he's going to get consistent at bats. If the Mariners continue to fall out of it, they're going to continue to play their young players. And look, he hit four home runs in a week, and it makes it seem like he's doing great. Before this week, he's someone that you just would he would be a black hole on your team. So you lied about everything you said nice about him before. I did. Okay. My favorite guy, Brandon Belt. 
Now I know you've been waiting for me to break uh, week after week. Yeah, it's been it's been like a week. You haven't brought him up. I'm shocked. What do you do this week to uh, make you it... a very good week? Yeah, of course he did. Week. We always hear about his good weeks. We don't hear about when he's terrible and goes over thirty five. Do we? Don't speak about him now. So now he's he's on a semi rate. I I still think we're now we're twenty five percent into the season. I still think this is going to be a breakout season for Brandon Belt for a little while here. That, that looked grim, but. He's now up to five home runs, 21 RBI, so he's projecting at 1982. I still think he's going to hit 27 home runs and reach 100 RBIs. Now, outside of you believing that... And he will have there, at least any, 15 stolen bases. 15 stolen bases seems like a lot for a guy who only has two right now. I think uh, he's, he runs. He runs. Yeah, I understand he runs, but I mean, I would like to see. But it has, it has to do with opportunity, I think. Uh, it does. Like if he's going to be getting on base hey, more, he'll, he'll have more of that. Fair enough. But I mean, look at the guy who hits ahead of him. Hunter Pence already has eight steals on the year, and there's someone actually who you were dead right on about Hunter Pence, and that he would run more this year. Uh, so maybe you're. See, I got I got the San Francisco team down. Yeah, yeah, you have them on lockdown. Look, I don't like Brandon Belt. I think I've been pretty clear about that, and you really like him. He's probably somewhere in between. Well, nobody's listening to me. He's only fifty three percent of league starting, thirty four percent. So I'm going to keep him all to myself. 